Hi Rahul, welcome to our first LinkedIn event. Uh, we are going to talk about disability, about diversity and inclusion during these talks. And uh, I welcome everyone who's watching this video and for those of you who do not know about Naidisha. Naidisha works as a lifelong partner for families impacted by autism, Down syndrome and other developmental disabilities. You can go to our platform to see, find more information and of course, uh, Families who need support can uh, approach us on the helpline. The details will be mentioned in the comments below. So welcome again, Rahul. Rahul, for those of you who do not know, Rahul Chindal is the Global Director for Scale Operations, uh, Scale Practices, uh, and he's also a great friend of Naidisha. Uh, Rahul, I met you two years back when the pandemic was just starting. I remember us meeting in the month of March and we were sort of sanitizing and shaking hands and then sanitizing again. That was the time when we met. So let me start with asking you, how have you been and how have these two years been for you? Oh, yes. Thank you so much for having me, Prachi. And uh, thank you to you and uh, all uh, of uh, what Naidisha does, everybody at Naidisha. I know you're such a support to families like uh, mine all over the country. So thank you. Thanks a lot for what you do. Yes, I think uh, I distinctly remember that meeting because I, my, my guess is probably that was one of my very last in-person meetings with somebody before the lockdown started. Uh, we had invited you to the uh, Google office in Hyderabad. Uh, we'd gotten that clearance, but you know that awkwardness had just started that do you shake hands, do you meet, is a mask on, mask off. Uh, so definitely remember that. The two years has been quite a roller coaster, I'm sure, just like with uh, everybody else. Uh, there's a few personal losses also. Uh, you know, getting closer to family, but some mental health challenges, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's been a demanding time, but I'm pretty sure, just like all other families, we also grew uh, as individuals and as family, and uh, hopefully have grown uh, stronger and wiser after the pandemic. But looking forward to everything becoming normal again. Yeah, yeah. no, I absolutely agree. On one side, the pandemic actually uh, affected people unequally, but at the same time, it was also a great equalizer. Like in the beginning of the pandemic, there was so much stigma around people who caught COVID. And later on, when everyone caught it, people were more comfortable with it. And stigma is something that uh, people in the disability sector always experience. So, um, I also remember our conversation then when we had spoken about the terms used, right? Um, as someone who is uh, in the leadership role in corporate and a uh, great disability ally. You have been using the terms uh, neurodivergent, and uh, I have been using the term intellectual and developmental disability. So, where are you on that uh, on that discussion now, Rahul? Just just to have this conversation. Yeah. No, this is a very important question. I mean, I often um, faced with this question myself, including in a conversation yesterday, that yeah. uh, people use all sorts of terms, right? So they will use uh, disabled, but they'll also use specially abled or some other lighter. Uh, terms and uh, on the other end are directly calling maybe these conditions as intellectual disabilities. So I, I do think it's quite a spectrum. Um, what I've come to believe over the years is uh, it's probably better to stick with the term uh, that uh, 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 United Nations uses, which is people with disabilities uh, as a general for, for the whole, uh, for, for, for any, any of the differences in that sense. But I do feel uh, it's important to realize or recognize why people use a milder term right especially abled or, or, or so on and so forth i, I think uh, they say it pro primarily due to two reasons one is more on the surfaces one one is more visceral i think on the surface is that they don't know any better so they actually think it probably comes out of compassion or maybe sometimes even pity uh, to so call somebody especially abled and uh, you know and so on so on, so on and so forth but I, I think that also comes out of a little bit that it is easy to say such a term and move on, right? I actually think that uh, advocates, families, individuals themselves, right. when they use more, um, you know, more precise terms like disabled or autistic or, or, and so on and so forth, I think they are the desire uh, and also from the self uh, advocates, right? They want to use the stronger terms right, to people with a person with a disability or an autistic person and so on and so forth, because they want everybody who hears that term to feel a responsibility towards That's people true. in this community, right? So I think the spectrum is of, do you want, do you recognize the community from a distance or do you 
recognize it from proximity, right? So, so that's there. I, I actually am comfortable with the term which UN recognizes, which is uh, a person Perfect. with disability. disability. And I, I do think that neurodiversity is uh, as, a, as a term uh, which was coined by, I think, Judy Singer from Australia many years ago. Uh, I think that term does justice to the overall spectrum, but then also calling out that this is a naturally occurring diversity among individuals at a neurological level, right? And I think while there are some more clearly recognized conditions, uh, right, or autism or ADHD or dyslexia or uh, uh, dyscalculia and, and so on and so forth and, and, and other variations within cerebral palsy or Down syndrome and so on, but but milder variations which may not have names of their own exist in many, many, many more people. So I think right. giving it the term neurodiversity probably is much more clarifying. And I really wish that more people understand because many more people are neurodiverse than they themselves recognize or that others recognize that they are neurodiverse. So, so I do feel that it is a term that uh, is picking up stream and uh, that's where I am. I, I like the term neurodiversity. Uh, I do feel that there are, you know, uh, differences and disabilities, and both are along the same spectrum. But uh, uh, people feel more comfortable with this term neurodiverse. Yeah, Rahul, you explained it very well. I think I I completely agree with you that uh, there is also a need to get people to recognize that uh, people are different. They are uh, they are thinking differently than you are, and it is up to us as a society to recognize these differences. And probably that becomes a starting point because disability till now has always been looked at from a medical model from that perspective. I mean, I, I we meet doctors, we meet experts in terms of the work that we do at Naivisha, and I see that they're using age-old terms, and it is not that they recognize those terms as stigma. They are using it because those are the medical terms that were used before, and over over years of usage, the way society used it, they, the words became discriminating, and there was a stigma associated to the word. So we have, yeah. at one level, I also feel that you're constantly moving from one word to another word to another word. Uh, but as you said, uh, these are just words and one has to move on. End of the day, it is what people want to achieve. Another important point that you mentioned there, Rahul, was people use the term sometimes because they're afraid whether it is the right term. How do you interact? I, I remember a conversation I had with someone in the park and I was very happy to have that conversation where a lady had asked me, how do I interact with your brother? You come in here every day, but I don't really know how to interact. So can you help me understand? And I was so happy to have someone who was actually asking how to go ahead because sometimes people just don't know. Um, now on those lines, Rahul, there last, last few weeks, there has been this Indigo incident which has uh, uh, taken internet by the storm. And uh, one thing I have been very happy about, what happened wasn't good, but one thing that I have been very happy about is that this happened, uh, the court travelers advocated so much for the family. Uh, honestly, I, I was highly emotional when I saw those videos where others were fighting for the family, others were advocating for the family. Um, again, it, it comes back to the point that even the staff, they have never experienced or never come across people with who are different than them, who have never experienced what autism is, what a meltdown is. Uh, so in a way, it's, all of this comes out of lack of awareness. And the thought I had this morning, Rahul, was that um, an organization like Google, I mean, practically everyone in this world uses Google, right? We don't use the word search engine anymore, we use the word Google. Uh, yeah. has such a such huge reach. Uh, I know there's a lot of work happening on accessibility, but I also think that there is a huge need for awareness, for making people aware. Awareness is the first step towards acceptance. So what are your thoughts on what can be done to raise awareness in the society? We had this conversation on our support groups, uh, in fact, yesterday, and everyone was talking about if there is acceptance, we can move further. Yeah. Well, this is a very important topic. Uh, I think uh, the pandemic time probably acted as a bit of a tailwind in the good direction. Uh, because during pandemic, I think the recognition of that individuals in perfectly okay conditions are still experiencing maybe mental health challenges. 
so i feel that the conversation around mental health became stronger during the last two years because it became a much more household topic now i believe that uh, that somebody with some sort of neurodiversity i, I think uh, they are more prone to mental health uh, uh, incidents right whether it is anxiety right. or fear and of course you know uh, meltdowns are just an intense uh, experience of anxiety or fear and or, or not being understood uh, or right. sadness and so on right so so i do feel that uh, maybe other fellow passengers may have stood up for that family and for that child uh, because they themselves might have experienced what mental health uh, challenges are even when you are yeah. not so called neurodiverse right Correct. so i do feel that in a way it is a good movement uh, which is happening that greater acceptance and i do believe that you know as as a country as india we are the country of vasudev kutumbakam right the world is one family so when somebody is suffering you kind of you know experience that compassion uh, so so i do feel that incidents like these probably act as trigger points for greater awakening of the society as a whole i also feel that uh, you know even though it is not explainable that why is the incidence rate of conditions like autism or adhd and dyslexia and so on so forth down syndrome why are they increasing we don't know medically but they are increasing and i do feel that it, while it's unfortunate it's also powerful that more people care when it becomes a personal topic right and when the incidence exactly. rate of let's say a neurodiversity like adhd or asd uh, autism spectrum disorder or dyslexia when these rates are growing more and more families are coming across with the reality that hey we might have a child or somebody in the family with a different condition what can we do to raise them well what can we do to support them well what can the education system do to uh, raise them well what can the neighborhood do right as they say that a child is raised by a whole community or a village right uh, not just by one person so i do feel that you know the pandemic era which introduced greater mental health uh, challenges for many many more people there for a greater recognition of that the incidence rate increasing anyway these kind of in- instances i think there is a uh, i feel it's a bit of an inflection point right more people are becoming aware of course the uh, the internet as a medium right uh, youtube as a channel uh, more more video channels of course uh, google as a search engine as a as a very integral part of society uh, so more and more is aware but i do feel that uh, as leaders as families as members of the society as you know allies as more and more people arise i think more and more people will know more and more people will care uh, i i would love for uh, you know us to arrive at a situation with this topic of maybe you know neurodiversity or intellectual disability uh, so i remember i'm i'm old enough to remember that you know as a person with glasses right yeah. you are you were seen a bit differently right so i sometimes try and explain to people that let's say you could call me as a person wearing glasses you could call me exactly. that rahul is on the blindness spectrum right rahul yeah. is not blind but i am on the blindness spectrum but with a assistive device i am able to integrate more or less well with the society so my dream is that you know with these intellectual differences also that with some accommodations from the society from various parts of the society from schools from medical in, uh, uh, fraternity from uh, uh, neighborhoods from relatives so on so forth that we will be able to integrate everybody with a with a intellectual uh, difference right so so i think companies like google of course have a big role to play both as employers uh, of people uh, but also as technology platforms so you know google as a company does a lot of work on accessibility accessibility is about making sure that our products and services work for everyone in fact it's it's a proud moment for me as an employee of the company that it's in our mission statement that you know google's mission statement is to make the world's information uh, available uh, and universally accessible right right so when we we have accessible as a as a phrase in our mission statement itself so the endeavor of course always is that that as an engineering company how do we make sure that our products are usable by everyone in the world at least we right. intend to design for everyone in the world so one is that and second is of course uh, uh, you know our own uh, culture inside the company so i can tell you that probably you know 100% of what i know about neurodiversity uh, as a topic i have learned as a cultural element in the company 
so but i do feel very good that not only google many 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 more employers are awakening to this many more schools are awakening to this many more doctors are awakening to this organizations That's like right. nidisha are playing an equal role i would would feel that what google plays as a search engine role uh, to the society i think organizations like nidisha are playing in terms of uh, raising the awareness so i think listen it, it's got to be a collective responsibility we all need to stand behind leaders like yourself prachi and organizations like nidisha and playing the role but uh, incidents like these while painful in the moment i think they contribute towards changing the societal uh, conversation on the topic absolutely it is events like this and when rest of the society participates in this conversations that uh, we can bring about a change and um, i that was the part that really uh, really heartened me when when this indigo incident happened and um, of course last thursday was global accessibility awareness day and uh, you have already spoken about various accessibility initiatives that uh, google has and uh, even at nidisha i feel accessibility is such a such a big term with so much uh, so much of meaning behind it because you can look at accessibility from the perspective of a person with disability accessibility is also in terms of people who speak different languages because today if yeah. i don't know english i am disabled in a way because i am not able to get that information that is available and when these accessibility features are introduced even in terms of language it it enables a person to get more information and uh, accessibility even through devices now that everything is available on mobile mobile phones are so cheap uh, data plans are uh, affordable it really people people are getting this information and again as you said organizations like google play a very important role and it is a collective responsibility for all of us to raise awareness um and definitely um you spoke about the uh, initiatives on inclusion at google would you want to share some more i know that you were a, a sponsor ex, you have been a ex sponsor on these initiatives you have played a role and you stepped down last year but as an employee of google as a person who advocates for disability maybe you can share your thoughts on that yes absolutely uh, i i believe uh, that uh, i personally believe that accessibility is the mother of invention right because when you design any product or service for a minority you actually make the majority's experience also better right there's a term that many of us use called a uh, curb cut effect which is to say that when you kind of enable let's say an older person or somebody with a stroller uh, uh, to kind of come onto the pathway easier that helps everybody actually right uh, you That's might right. design it for a person with disability with on a mobile mobility scooter uh, but it will help everybody uh, come onto the pathway uh, or, or the footpath easier so that is an integral part of our work uh, at google or what you know we both Uh, experience as an employee or, or uh, you know, support as a leader. So I feel that there were there are four parts to it. Uh, there is a part about coming in, which is about enabling more people with differences or disabilities to join Google or Google's extended workforce with our other uh, partners. There is a part about coming out, which is creating enough psychological safety so that more people with differences or disabilities feel open. you know open to come out they feel okay to tell others that i am experiencing this kind of disability or either directly as me as an individual or me as a caregiver right that i care for somebody in my family who has this kind of disability so to create enough psychological safety that people are able to come out so come in come out come out right and then then we speak about go anywhere which is to have accessible work workplaces right okay. in the new office where i am sitting these days that that floor has been designed to be very accessible that let's say a person on a wheelchair can actually literally press a button which is at their level they can press a button and all doors open with with the button press right okay. there are uh, with in lifts every lift number uh, there is a braille uh, equivalent uh, of that right the the floor has been designed in a way that somebody with a a motor disability can navigate well so that's the third part of it which is go anywhere and fourth part is feel supported feel supported means that our neurotypical colleagues 
our managers right our peers do they have enough awareness of what kind of differences exist in the physical body or the or at a neurological level how right. do those differences manifest what can they do to support right so we've got training material for managers we've got sessions of course the global uh, accessibility awareness uh, day uh, uh, earlier this week that is celebrated quite widely across uh, across google uh, globally so so these are the four aspects but i wanted to share those because i don't think they are unique to google any organization any society any neighborhood can use them which is come in right come out go anywhere and feel supported so like you were saying prachi that it is a collective responsibility i just wanted to share what we doing at google but all of these four pillars can be invited by anybody yeah yeah i think it's i think the initiatives might be replicated in many places but the way the terms are coined is quite interesting i found that very very interesting uh, rahul during our conversations earlier you had mentioned about disability alliance so uh, can you share a little bit more yeah. about that yes absolutely and uh, you know i as a uh, as a caregiver uh, of uh, someone with a difference uh, as an and an employee of google i found a great set of hope and assurance and uh, courage through these uh, materials so so disability alliance is a employee resource group uh, at google there are many other employee resource okay. group let's say for any other minorities right there may be religious minorities uh, uh, right. you know while people are trying but still we don't have gender parity in the industry right so so there are other employee resource groups for other kind of differences so disability alliance is a employee resource group at google that i am a beneficiary and a member of uh, which is right. formed by people who may themselves experience some sort of disability people who may be in care giving responsibilities uh, or people who may not be in set 1 or set 2 but generally care enough about the topic so they are allies to people okay. with disabilities right and then there may be a, a specific part of allyship which is about building products and services for people with disability so people's day job may be that i think google and we recognize that you know there are about 1.3 billion people in the world uh, who experience right. some form of permanent or temporary disability so disability alliance is that special interest group which kind of understands the various forms of disability better understands how do we support it better right how do we as an engineering company as a products company how do we build products which can be used by people with various different conditions for example right. on google meet we have uh, a captions capability so live captions are generated by machine learning algorithms themselves right uh, real time which enables a lot more people to comprehend what is being said better so so disability alliance is that employer resource group which provides support which provides resources which provides forums uh, and i would encourage all companies and all corporations to you know think that this 1.3 billion population is a very large market also for whatever whatever products and services any company builds how can we build them also for this 1.3 billion so it's it's a large market it's a it's a employee right. talent pool from where we can hire and so on and so forth so i think disability alliance at google is a model but it can be replicated by more companies in that sense okay out of my own interest round uh, what are the initiatives for caregivers that happen at google because uh, one of course when when there is disability alliance in every organization that is happening more and more and those working in the sector are welcoming this change but uh, i'm very curious whenever i speak to somebody from some corporate i always ask this question that what is happening there in terms of providing support to caregivers because you and i are caregivers to persons who are differently abled who have disability but practically everyone is a caregiver at this point we have elderly parents people are yeah. having long form of covid and they are caregivers as well so what are the initiatives yeah. that are happening on yes you know, google is a great employer in that sense of uh, providing uh, enabling caregiving so in fact during the pandemic time but it is always uh, also available uh, there is a specific leave called carers leave people okay. can take that carers leave uh, okay. during the pandemic time uh, all googlers were uh, eligible to take up to 12 weeks of caregiving leave right when let's say somebody maybe was down with covid but that caregiving leave is always available 
right okay. many many weeks of leave one can take that that's one uh, one uh, specific perk uh, at google but in general i think uh, the other way see caregiving can be a long term responsibility it may not be a short term right. thing right so that's so that right. means that we also enable employees to feel supported by their peers for employees to feel supported by their managers or management chain and that happens when there is a constant dialogue about disability when there's a constant dialogue about health conditions right right so that dialogue actually creates that psychologically safe environment so i would say that that is also something available also right. um, google's uh, medical insurance policy actually enables specific uh, uh, allowances that people can do so for example uh, for families that we need therapies right for learning for autism uh, and such That's conditions right. uh, our medical insurance policy allows a pretty significant reimbursement uh, for sessions right so so there is financial support available in that sense so broadly these are the three buckets right so uh, time support through carers leave cultural and psychological safety support through uh, employer resource groups like disability alliance and the constant dialogue on the topic to constant ra uh, raising of awareness on the topic yeah. and then also financial support through medical insurance uh, uh, these are the main but there are many other things also there but i i do feel that uh, even when a company may not have the resources that let's say a large company like google has but that right. second element of cultural that psychological safety can be provided it doesn't it doesn't cost money right we can all money, yeah, provide absolutely. psychological safety to caregivers in that sense yeah yeah no uh, these are very important points and i hope everyone who is listening to this conversation would take that in when as the carer sees the flexibility on time that you spoke about insurance insurance has been and you would be aware of this has been an ongoing topic on our support groups uh yeah. companies deny insurance for people with disabilities since a long long time and parents are running pillar to post to find that support and when an organization of when corporate uh, push for insurance that includes people with disabilities it is going to change the mindset and it is going to bring about that change in terms of insurance yeah. because once a company is providing that flex, that uh, uh, supporting insurance for therapies for google they will also open up to supporting therapies for individuals yeah. also and practically most of the corporates do provide insurance so if they can push for insurance for people with disabilities i think that that's going to be an absolutely wonderful yeah uh, change yeah. and uh, like you said uh, the cultural opening it up culturally so people feel safe psychologically safe coming out i think is very very important um and then just let me share this with you when i started nai disha was adamant about we had started with the directory as you know which helps parents find the right services we were creating information resources and it there's a lot of effort that has gone into creating those vetted resources bringing out information from the experts but end of the day the most important thing that every parent needs to realize is that peer support having other parents that one can speak to uh, learn from understand that somebody is there on the journey with them and can completely get what the other person is going through that that uh, uh, and it doesn't take much to create support groups as you said while other things might have a financial implication but to create that environment where you can have peer support of any kind for a mental health for any anything there can be peer support for people who have elders who have disability uh, disabilities or who have uh, illnesses long term illnesses as well um so that that's a, that's a great initiative and uh, thanks for sharing that rahul um I, when you're speaking about all the uh, uh, support that is provided what you are someone who has been out you have seen the global how the global scenario looks like and what is what happens at in in india what do you think are the india specific issues that we face yeah i think uh, you spoke about stigma uh, when we started speaking i i feel that uh, that is the biggest one um i also feel that our census has not done a, a good job so far of counting yeah. ac accurately counting because in my personal view of course i am not an expert on the topic i am not an expert on census but in my personal view there is no reason that in a large very diverse country like india that the incidence rate of disability overall 
or the incidence rate of neurodiversity uh, would be any different than a country than other countries like large countries like United States and so on. So I feel so. For example, on the topic of uh, uh, number of people of, with autism spectrum disorder, right? So in the U.S., broadly the rate declared by the Center for Disease Control, the latest one is around one in 38 or one in 40 people, which is two two and a half percentage of the uh, of, of children. And in India, if we start to look for census, it, this is autism yeah. only, right? Yeah. ADHD yeah. probably is one in ten dyslexia and other conditions, Down syndrome might be even more. Uh, so, so I feel that uh, uh, the broader number of about, uh, you know, the similar numbers in India are very, very less. So I feel that there is a census doing a bit of a disservice to the actual size of the, you know, difference in the society or the uh, problem area in the society. So when we don't count, then we don't intervene, right? So, so I think that census is a big problem that societal norm of uh, stigma is a, is a thing. But I do believe that in the internet era, that you know the good practices also travel very rapidly across the world, right? So the go, uh, like we see on platforms and forums like LinkedIn or Twitter or other places, like we saw how rapidly the Indigo incident uh, you know, came about and everybody knew about it, everybody was voicing their opinion. So, so I do feel that that is a good thing that, you know, uh, Information flows quickly, but there is deep-rooted social stigma in India, right? Disability That's is right. treated as as a curse, and that I feel uh, needs to change, and is changing, right? As more and more people are uh, traveling, and as more and more people are upgrading their thought process, uh, I think I think it is changing. It it should not be looked at as a curse. It it is, you know, it's a. Uh, well, I I'll, I'll say what a pediatric neurologist told me uh, five or six years ago. Right, that there's a difference between a disease and a disorder. A disease yes. is to be cured. A disorder yes. is to be managed. Right. Yes. So yes. managing requires that awareness. So in, in India, that stigma piece is there. The census piece is there. Uh, I also feel that because uh, of the the census piece and the uh, stigma piece, there is very 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 little funding available to increase awareness to create support systems. Uh, but I do feel that, you know, nature's justice, Prachi, is that disability does not uh, is not limited to the lower strata of the economic uh, uh, economic strata of the society. Disab there are rich disabled. There are disabled in the uh, rich uh, part of the society also. So I feel that that is nature's justice that, uh, you know, that every uh, I feel that as products and services are being built for the people with disabilities who can afford them such efforts will subsidize the products and services to be built for people who can't afford them. So it's one of those things, right, that in an airplane, uh, people in the first class or the business class also subsidize air travel for the economy class. So similarly, yeah. because there are, uh, you know, what is what is very surprising when I came across this statistic a few years ago, that the 15% of the world's uh, uh, disabled uh, community, or they actually have a collective purchasing power of six trillion dollars right trillion dollars, so six trillion that. dollars right if you were to yeah. take that out it is probably the world's third largest country in that sense uh, right so it, it's the world world's uh, largest minority in that sense so this minority and their caregiving uh, and their caregivers and their families have a lot of affordability also right? right so so i think more companies need to be awakened in india that there is money to be made by building high quality products and services for this community and their and their families That's so right. that awareness of the commercial opportunity is also a barrier i feel but it is changing i see uh, venture in money coming into this field slowly but surely uh, in the west a lot more in india also it is slowly coming so these three things i would say are the barriers right the social stigma which i feel positive is changing because of the internet uh, yeah. Right. There is this piece on building high quality products and services. But then we have to do our job in terms of making sure that we count correctly, because we when we undercount significantly, right. when we right. undercount significantly, we lose out on the awareness and we lose out on the commercial aspect also. of it. If right. we count right. correctly, we will see that in India also, there's a very large opportunity. Yeah, you're, you're so right. I just reminds me of an incident I had need to fund a long back, probably four or five years back. And the first thing this funder said is, 
Census says 0.15 one five percent that was, i think if yeah. i'm not wrong that was the statistic for the people affected so why would i invest in this cause because it's not a large section uh, let me talk about educating girls it's 50 percent of the population so so yeah. that was the difference but i i agree with you i said let's hope uh, i think the census was to happen uh, in uh, two years back but that is when pandemic hit us yeah when it happens now let's hope that the numbers are counted correctly absolutely i also want to uh, talk about one more thing which we haven't had a chance to cover so far is the topic of intersectionality right especially yeah. when organizations are planning their let's say csr uh, and other activities I, i think that the topic of disability is not a separate topic from let's say the topic of supporting girls right Correct. or the topic of supporting any other minority i would really encourage uh, people to also look at intersectionality what do we mean by that is when if you want to support girls yes absolutely please support girls please support. but can you prioritize supporting girls with disability absolutely okay? because they are absolutely. the most vulnerable right in that sense okay. so in in any endeavor can we look at people who are at multiple intersections of differences or minorities right if you want to talk about a religious minority can we talk about religious minority with disability Correct. if you want to talk talk about a gender minority can we talk about gender minority with disability right so lgbtqia plus community also has people with disability so exactly. so can we go to the most vulnerable first also right so this disability is not a orthogonal topic it is a topic that cuts across every other type of classification uh, so yeah. so that would be just one input i wanted to share that's very important input and very very well very well articulated round that absolutely and it also brings me back to what is inclusion or accessibility about right it is not just about disability it is across when you think about inclusion or accessibility you are thinking about a person who comes who is different from you it can be the person can be different from you on on the religious grounds on on the socio economic grounds on the cultural grounds but end of the day we are trying to embrace those differences so yes. that that was a very good point round thanks thanks for sharing that uh, i thoroughly enjoyed this conversation round and uh, um, i don't want to take more of your time but uh, if there's an, anything you want to share in conclusion uh, there are very yeah. important no, things you shared yeah thank you so much i have one i want to definitely share gratitude on my personal behalf but on behalf of so many families that benefit from your work uh, prachi and uh, everybody at nidesha so thank you for that i i want to say that uh, many people feel that they don't need to care about disability as a topic because they don't have anybody in the family today but i want yeah. to actually share with people uh, that disability is a much more common topic than people believe because disability occurs due to three triggers disability can occur due to you know at the time of birth due to genetics yeah. right including neurological but disability also happens due to accidents right uh, and disability very 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 importantly also happens due to aging Correct. right the aging so even if a family today believes that they have nothing to do with disability they can't be sure that they will never have anything to do with disability so so i would like to say that as one thing and the other thing i would like to say that you know disability is a naturally occurring diversity it is god's work right so can we do the god's work in terms of embracing everybody with disability because the same god that produced you and i also produced somebody with some difference or some disability so embracing a person with disability supporting a person with disability encouraging and mainstreaming a person with disability is actually embracing the world that god has created right so so i think uh, let us be bigger people let us think in a bigger way let us not try to do othering right that because i don't have somebody with disability in my family so i don't need to care about it that i feel is a small way to think about it let us try to be big people and care about the topic of disability because somewhere or the other all families are going to experience this so so let us make it a mainstream topic and let us treat it like a mainstream topic that's what i wanted to share prachi thank you so much i've really enjoyed the time today thank you thank you so much and it's a wonderful way to end the conversation thank you rahul and thanks everyone thank for you, watching thank you